Christ is risen.
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw anew at the true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I'll confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave me. God, merciful Father, Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we, who celebrate with the joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for this Resurrection of Our Lord Festival is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65. Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy, and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and a sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with him. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountains says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. reading is from 1 Corinthians 15. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom of, to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks.
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. On the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise? And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now as Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. On up, children. Bring your offerings to Jesus. Pretty, pretty dresses, aren't they? Come on, honey. You can sit down right here. You want to sit on my lap? Oh, you did. Okay, you can sit down. There you go. Okay. 
Okay, okay, put it right here. Okay. Everybody looks so pretty today, your new dresses and clothes. Did you notice the colors that we dressed Jesus in the house with were white? Isn't that something? And this past week was all dark or black for when Jesus died on the cross. We took all the banners down out there, so now we just have white ones. And look at this over here. Can you see? Jesus' tomb. Where Jesus went into the tomb on Good Friday, he died on the cross, and he truly died for our sins. And now he rose. And you see the stone rolled away. And Jesus is with us now, but we don't see him, do we? He, yeah, he died for our sins. But he's with us. He says, wherever two or three. Do we have more than two or three here? Yeah. He says, I'm with you always. He died on the cross and rose again. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the wonderful, real story in the Bible, how you died for our sins and you rose again the third day. We're so happy. It makes us happy and joyful. We don't even have to worry about anything because you're always with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you so much.
church is a global choir of praises to the victorious king. He lives, and we will too. Uh, but Jesus, I have a complaint. Another one, Pastor Bolter? I hear that you complain a lot. I hear this from others. I know, Lord. I tend to be a complainer. You are very patient with me. But I have this complaint this morning. Why don't you just take us to heaven? Continue, Pastor Bolter. Let me hear your reasoning. Oh, Lord, we know that you are the only true God. And we know there are other competitors out there for souls. This saddens us. Continue. And we are convinced by your spirit and good sound reasoning that only you claim to be alive after you die. And through your Bible witness, many saw you. In fact, over 500. No one ever saw Buddha after he died. No one ever saw Mohammed after he died at 61 years of age. My Lord, I can't believe how tens of thousands still visit Medina, Saudi Arabia every year to visit Mohammed's tomb. As Christians, we don't do that. Continue, Pastor Golter. I'm being patient, for this is quite the length of the rationale. Get to the point, would you? If I may, dear Lord Jesus, it's quite something that in your holy book, you had 18 different prophets between the 10th and 4th centuries B.C. predict your birth, life, death, and resurrection. And it all came true. Uh, Pastor Golter, don't you know that I don't lie? I wrote the book, remember? I say what I mean and mean what I say. I write history and fulfill history. Continue, Pastor Golter. I'm waiting for your point. May I press this a bit further, Lord? We know that other historical figures, such as Homer, whose Iliad is backed by 1,800 manuscripts. But this is so small, Lord, compared to the 25,000 New Testament manuscripts. So, dear Lord, besides your certain promises of your death and resurrection, plain reasoning is overwhelmingly convincing that you are the only true God as the way, the truth, and the life for all sinners. So, dear Lord, we know you want more Christians. We get that. But you have not taken us to heaven. Why don't you just snap your fingers and produce a boatload of believers and that's that? Just get on with it. Finally, Pastor Golter, please get going. Well, since you defeated death, why do you leave us here to still die? We suffer COVID. We suffer heart disease. We suffer high cholesterol. We suffer stress. We suffer, suffer harsh words. We, we contribute to that. We suffer through wars. We've got the war in the Ukraine right now. Christians die like everybody else. Believers and unbelievers all have funerals. Again, why don't you just snap your fingers and make it all happen? Finally, Pastor Golter, you're getting to your question. It took you long enough. Understand it this way. You are my advertising campaign. You and all my dear children are my billboards along Interstate 80. You are my witnesses in Heathrow Airport in London. 
You are my witnesses at Deer and the Arsenal. You are my paid content on e-commerce. You are my red letter script stained with my precious blood, a public letter to the world. You are my spirit's letters of recommendation to the world to be known and read by all. Okay, Lord, but how so? Yes, I have you die like everybody else, but not without hope. You know, you know, my children know that eternal hell and damnation I suffered on the cross. I rose the third day. I defeated my own punishment for sin by becoming myself the target of my father's anger. But it's deeper, Pastor Golter. I defeated death, but I still allow people to die. I don't cause wars, hatred, and murder. This is the devil's work and the sin in everyone but I work and manage this to work weakness in everyone so that they would turn to me. Weakness, Lord? Weakness? For when you are weak and all the things people trust in, gravitate to, put their confidence in, more money, more power, more prestige than I am the one who is everyone's strength and hope and savior. I am the world's only hope. They are to turn to me and live. That's why I left my body scarred in my resurrected body. I offer my open arms with scarred hands and side to all sinners. Pastor Golter, I am present there right now among that assembly, offering my free forgiveness to everyone there who has ears to hear. The world sees my children not chasing after things but me. They see my children with joy and hope, even in the midst of sorrow. They see sinners, yes, but forgiven sinners. And they see my children orbit around me in church, patterned after how I created the earth, orbiting around the sun. It's the clockwork of life, the rhythm of life with joy abounding. Pastor Golter, I don't need your love. Surely the church is to love me. But your neighbor needs your love. You love me through your neighbor. When they're broken, you offer an ear. When they need a ride, you just do it. My children offer prayers to me to help others. And I work that out. Pastor Golter, my children, they are my paid for, blood bought, living testimonies of me. The only true living God and the world's only hope. Remember what I said to Martha at the tomb of Lazarus? I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Oh, yes, Lord. We believe. And now we begin to understand why you're not just immediately snapping your fingers and taking us all to heaven right now. Not that I like this kind of advertising plan to be weak. 
But that's your plan, O Lord. And so we rejoice. Use us as you would see fit. He is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Oh, and Pastor Golder, I expect I'll hear more of your complaints later. Amen. We rise and sing.
Please stand. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For a holy fear at the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we would tremble no longer before the grave, but rejoice and live in the truth of his power to save, let us pray to the Lord. For the church, that by God's Spirit we would hold fast to the word preached to us and, receiving it with joy, take our stand in it and be saved by it. And that God hinder all who would sow doubt into our hearts, granting us courage to confess its truth in our life and conversation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and those in any need, Captain Epplesen, Lois Blair, Gary Shocker, Lonnie Grothis, Jason Abramowski, Carl Harrington, Dudley Fowler, Dave Usong, and those we name in our hearts at this moment, that the dawning light of the new creation in Christ would sustain them in faith, and that, according to God's will, would be granted renewed health as a foretaste of their eternal healing kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For joy in Christ's great victory feast as he shares it with us from this altar, and that he would overcome our sin by his forgiveness and swallow up our death in his life through the eating and drinking of his true body and blood in faith, let us pray to the Lord. For all who mourn, that the truth of Christ's empty tomb would comfort them, and that in the midst of their grief they would abide in the hope of his, of his resurrection until the day when God wipes every tear from their eyes. Let us pray to the Lord. We join today in singing eternal hallelujahs with innumerable angels in a festal gathering with the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and with the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And we bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts let us give thanks unto the Lord our God it is truly me right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, his destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
He is risen. He is risen and it's so true. I think we should give a big hand to Jacqueline Magnuson, our director of parish music, and the choir, weren't they something? <laughs> Applause to our king, of course. Uh, if there's someone among us that doesn't have a place to settle in terms of your soul, come on home here. We would welcome you with open arms. Just an update on calling of an associate pastor. We're going to have a congregational meeting next week at 9.30 on Sunday morning. So keep that in your prayers. There's two pastors' names that will be brought forward. You can do your research. <laughs> but consult our Lord. <laughs> okay, uh, God's peace. Yeah.